Hello and welcome to Standard Sports Cricket Coverage. Day one of the third test done. I'm hesitant to say the series is done as a contest, but it, it feels like that this morning. I'm joined by Will McPherson, who is at the MCG where England have been rolled for 185. Will, your thoughts on, on a pretty bleak day for England? Yeah, I feel like I've started these chats a few times by saying it's the worst day yet, but it's hard to avoid that conclusion on this occasion. Yes, in Brisbane, they were bowled out for 147, not 185. Uh, but this was a this is a case of batters getting themselves in and getting themselves out and, and some horrible dismissals, especially from England's most senior players, which just make it desperately frustrating. Joe Root, it was the same old story for him in Australia. He batted beautifully, fizzed away for his 50, and then he just got out from nowhere. He played one full shot, the exact kind of full shot he's been trying to avoid all week. He's been spending a lot of time talking about it, and he he, he just gave his wicket away. Uh, by the time the tea break arrived, um, Ben Stokes and Joss Butler had followed in equally kind of farcical fashion. In fact, each one was worse than the last. Um, and it was only thanks to the tail, really, but they managed to wag their way to 185. It could have been even worse. It could have easily been 150. Johnny Bairstow briefly batted all right, but then he had a strange dismissal. Ollie Robinson got out slogging. They just, yeah, it was it was an inept display of batting, unfortunately. Uh, and their, their, their minds looked very scrambled. They looked very flat when it came to the, their turn in the field later in the day. They did pick up one wicket. Uh, David Warner almost from nowhere. And Mark Wood bowled really nicely, but... They were just flat, and uh, it looked a hell of a long way back from this test match. Um, a word on Joe Root then, because it's been easy to criticise him as a captain, and we've not been able to criticise him as a batsman because he's been so good this year, and, and even on this tour where he hasn't got a ton yet, he's, he's England's leading run scorer. But at what point does a little bit of flack have to come his way because he is the only one getting runs, but he's not getting the massive runs that you want from your your inform number two batsman in the world now but what's number one coming into the series he is carrying an intolerable burden um and i just don't i, I i'm reluctant to to blame him although his dismissals in this series all, all five of them in different ways he's not been probably since the first one uh, in brisbane when he got his first duck of the year he, he's probably not been blameless uh, and today was probably the worst one um three times he's got himself in three times he's got himself out he's got he's got eight uh, half centuries in his last eight tests in Australia now. And it's just looking in such great form. Uh, he's got, you know, nine unconverted half centuries here, which is as many as anyone ever in Australia. Um, today really felt like it, it could be an incredible story for him. Um, the MCG is a hostile place to play cricket on Boxing Day for a, for a touring team. There are only 57,000 uh, in, in the crowd today, which was a slightly disappointing number, I think, but there's a bit of COVID hesitancy. But it was a very kind of, happy atmosphere and uh, you know he, he was the only one who could have spoiled that party really uh but yeah. it was a very frustrating dismissal i suspect we are coming to the end of his captaincy i wouldn't have necessarily said that before this tour um but i think it's just where it's grinding him down now he's he's not only had to um you know carry a losing team as leader but he's also having to carry the batting and it's just too much Quick word before we finish on his opposite number, Pat Cummins, who missed the second test through no fault of his own, really comes back in, wins the crucial toss today, mops up the top three with some magnificent bowling. I mean, he, he just can't do any wrong apart from sit inside and restaurant. <laughs> yeah, Cummins had a dream day. It was a fantastic toss uh, to win as well. Root says he would have... Uh... Bold first, I do believe him, despite yeah. his little mishap in Brisbane. He, he's, he's, Root's been on the wrong end of a toss in this series, which is always hard as a touring captain. He's lost the, the two that you'd really want to win, and he's won the one where everyone was kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, so, yeah, it, Cummins had a brilliant day. To bowl first is a bold call in Australia. They don't, it's, it's, it's anathema mm. to them. They don't, it's instinctively not what they do. But um, as a bowling captain, he has a little bit more influence over over how that goes. And his bowling in the morning session was impeccable. He bowled one six over spell, which got the wickets of the Seba Mead and Zach Crawley. I mean, he returned for a four over spell and got the wicket of David Milan, who's been, it's been a difficult wicket for Australia to pick up that one. He ended the day with only three wickets. He didn't use himself that much in the afternoon. He shared the bowling around a bit. Um, but yeah, it, it was a magnificent performance from Cummins. And um, yeah, as you say, he, he, he really can do no wrong. 
Well, we'll be back same time tomorrow to review the second day's play. Uh, England really need to make early inroads as it feels like they have pretty much every time they've had the ball in hand and they've not often managed to, but we'll see how we go.